news feature beneath the masthead on the Daily Independent newspaper and the first newspaper as well asks the question as to how this measure would adequately tackle the current hunger crisis in Nigeria. Now, on the Daily Independent, you'd find the lead story. FG tackles hunger, gives 20 trucks of rice to each state FCT, says it has identified solution to food shortage. May reveal final resolution on minimum wage Thursday. Now, and beneath that, you'd find the feature story inserted to your top right hand corner just beneath the lead story that reads worsened food crisis pushes inflation to 34.19 percent now on the first newspaper you'd find the lead story hardship will fg's 20 trucks of rice to each state fix it big mm. question this morning we started for exactly life. and it's quite interesting that this particular question resonates what many nigerians will be asking particularly what we are also looked at in previous engagement on our government taking measures to ensure that they be able to reduce their ship in the country i could remember 20 trucks of rice for each state i could also remember late last year there were five billion for each state and there was opportunity that for was under the infrastructure support fund exactly and for opportunity for each state to get over 100 trucks of rice for themselves and distribute to their people as that question asks will it ever get to the right people will it ever get to the right nigerians will it ever be distributed to the point that nigerians who need this food at this point in time will get their rice one other aspect of another question we can also ask on this particular question that this newspaper has thrown up is that did Nigerians really need rice from the federal government? Has anybody asked yourself that question? Did Nigerians really need rice from the federal government? Do residents and indigenous of state really need rice from the federal government? For me, the answer is no. It's not rice that we need. It's the opportunity for us to grow our rice, to buy our rice for ourselves and buy accessible, affordable rice for ourselves. As far as I'm concerned, not too critical about these particular measures of the government because we still need to allow them for taking this measure. But the issue is that from past experience, especially the ones that was given to state governors to dispute, how many individuals, indigenous residents at the state level get their rights? There was social media gallery around how people are giving rights to share. And somebody will say, I'll get one mood. The other person will get two cups. The other person will get three cups. Are we going back to that era again? Even though, as I earlier pointed out, not too, too critical about these particular measures, but as much as possible to be able to let government know that these are just cosmetic arrangements that at the end of the day, you see a segment of the society coming out at you that this is not what they really want, just as I posted as a question before. Now, in being able to sample opinions and get to mm -hmm. what respective Mm -hmm. communities across 774 local governments need mm -hmm. beyond the state approach because we're talking about this in a time when we're talking local government autonomy. Yeah, exactly exactly so yeah. I, I was expecting to see an approach where beyond sending to states mm -hmm. probably the third year since the emphasis mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. local governments mm -hmm. now can also have a need assessments conducted mm -hmm. so that uh this approach is are seen to be more curative mm -hmm. than cosmetic like you said definitely because we need that kind of approach in ensuring that government policy get down to the bottom because these 20 trucks of rice that they are giving to state is not for the elite of the state it's not for the for the traditional rulers of the state it's not for the religious leaders of the state. it's not for party chieftain it is not for the middle class in the state get it it is for the bottom of the bottom of the poorest of the poorest in the state but guess what this rice will end up in the party chieftain house. It will end up in the house of state house of assembly members house. It will end up at the local government chairman of a particular political party in that state. It will end up at the religious leader's house. It will end up at the traditional leader's house. It will end up at councillors and whoever that is at least more, someone who is close Do to the government. you think at this point we need a feedback mechanism? Mm. Since we have the infrastructure support uh -huh, for uh -huh. 185 billion exactly. disbursed earlier in the administration of President mm -hmm, Bola Metinbu, mm -hmm. do you think that after the disbursement, there ought to have been a feedback on how the 185 billion naira mm -hmm. infrastructure support fund mm -hmm. was distributed? It was even 180, not 150, 180. 185. Yeah, 185. Additional 5 billion. 5 billion. Well. So that feedback mechanism is what we don't get. That's why initially, when on this platform, we have said that we need evaluation of monetary in to be very very effective from the federal government to the state government then to the local government now the 185 billion that was distributed late last year to also cushion the effect of the economic hardship how much of feedback has the federal government received how much of 
a response in terms of how the governors have gone around distributing the money, how they have been able to arrange the policy and have going to ensure that their policy was effective, how much of it have been given to the public. We can't hear much from it. Rather, we are only hearing from side talk, maybe someone who was close to the government say, okay, they did this, they did that. But the reconcrete information that people are supposed to work on, by now, before throwing out this 20 talk of rice, the federal government would have said, let us evaluate the initial one that we did before. How effective was it? What was the response of the people to the truck of rice that state governors were sharing? The 5,000 they were giving, some were even giving 10, 10,000. How did they do it? What was the feedback from the people? So that we can now know that if this 20 truck is going back to the same people, so we can know that, okay, if the 20 truck will not be enough, we can increase it to 30. Then the people who got initially, can we excuse them from this coming one that is going? And attend to those mm. who didn't get, who the get in the first let's, one. Let's look at the place of sustainability because mm. um, some people have said that, I've argued that what Nigeria, just like you rightly said, mm. what Nigeria need now is not palliatives. Mm. You know, it's um, environment, enabling environments mm. to, you know, produce and, you know, be productive. Exactly. However, what play, what you, you've, you've hammered on the federal government mm. coming out to tell us this was what was spent, this mm. was how it went. But where, where is the, what, what is the role of civil societies? Mm. What's the role of advocacy groups? Mm. What's the role of, you know, these other organizations mm -hmm. in the place of transparency? Mm. Should we leave the burden of giving and still coming to give feedback to the mm. federal government? Definitely, we're supposed to work with the civil society to get in the feedback, then review the feedback. Last week on this platform, I was here last week, Tuesday, Abby, and we also made mention of independent organization reviewing and evaluating some of these activities of government. That's the role of the civil society. But the challenge is this. Our civil society is polarized. We have civil society that are available on the system just safeguarding the policy of international donor agencies, trying to market what international donor agencies want to do. They also have civil society that are very close to the government, that are more like a political party than offshore of political parties. They also have civil society that are professional in their own making who are doing what they are doing so that they can get procurement contracts from the government in terms of carrying out accountability in one way or the other. They also have civil society that they don't have funding, they don't have anybody supporting them, but they are giving an objective review of what is happening, but they don't have the legal backing to also work. So, even as I have mentioned all the civil society, what they normally suggest to government is just resolution. It's not binding on the government. There is no law that will say whatever the civil society do as a finding. There are a lot of research work that we be done in terms of what is happening to the Nigerian economy, civil society have proposed. Like yesterday, my organization, Econ Analytics, brought up a first statement on why government need to go beyond food importation. There are strategic things that need to be done because food importation is not strategic to the economy. It has a devastating effect on our currency, particularly our monetary policy going forward. Naira devaluation is will be impacted with the food importation policy of the government. That's one. Now, uh, we have suggested that government need to go beyond that. So now, it's not left for the government to say, okay, what these guys have said, can we take one or two of their suggestions? Can we work on it? But on the other way, and they can also don't mind this them. They are just making noise. They don't know what they are doing. And the government will leave those policies. So when civil society has directed, can they suggest to the government? They are suggesting. But the key issue is that there is no legal binding on the, on the government to take what they are suggesting to them. On this issue of uh, food uh, palliative distribution, a lot of organizations have said, don't distribute food. That's not what Nigerians do. Even though we also under identify that particular aspect from the short to medium term arrangement to cushion the effect. But we have have discovered that since 1999, when government said they are giving the poor people money, they are giving the poor people food, it's only a fragment of the population of the poor that gets some of this palliative So that how can about. we change this narrative? If this is a narrative, how can we change it? The best way to change it is just three ways. One is that if government say we are giving this 20 truck now, we are giving to the state governors. What about the civil society that have been working for the last 20 years, very transparent, very accountability? Why don't you use those civil society organizations to distribute the food? Don't use the state. Because the data that the state has, or those state government have in their coffers, in their state government office, some of those data are just political data that are just got in one way or the other. That doesn't reflect the numbers of the people that they're supposed to that be. That comprehensive social register we're looking for. Mm. These, um, uh, have you, see, they are the state governors to go and do comprehensive social register. How many of them have brought out that have done their own? Nobody. They are even asking for the government to come and give them money to go and carry that social register. If you remember, five uh, cardinal agreement of National Economic Council was that state will go back and carry that social register by themselves, not the one that federal government is doing. I don't know whether if you remember within last year that this argument about social register, when the social register office in Abuja said we have 30 million 
uh, vulnerable Nigerians to be shared money to. State government say no. You, are, you don't know them. We know that people. Let us mm. go back. And the federal government should go ahead. Till now, the no state. Himself said, go yeah, ahead. Go ahead. Till today, no state have come out with their social register. Now, big questions this morning on how we can come by a comprehensive social register. Mm. As the federal government has distributed 20 trucks of rice to 36 states and the FCT. It is also coming at a time when uh, the NBS has released its current data for the inflationary rate in Nigeria, mm. pegging headline inflation at 34.19% and food inflation at 40.89%. Now, these figures have been widely disputed by the OPS and Nasima. It makes frontline focus on our next two papers, the Punch newspaper and the Niger News Direct. Let's pick them up together. On the front page of the Punch newspaper this morning is the lead story. OPS blames insecurity as food inflation hits 40.8%. NBS links inflation to rising prices of millet, gari, yam, fish, ground nut oil, others. Nasima, LCCI, others lament insecurity, seek rural infrastructure investments. Hmm. And um, on Nigerian News Direct newspaper, we see that story saying stakeholders G3 as inflation rate hits 34.19%, 28-year high. Weak foreign reserves responsible for high inflation rate, and that's coming from Ayo, Teriba. And then cost of production, unemployment, major drivers of high inflation. And that's from the former CIB and President uh, what do you have to say about the inflation uh, rate? It's very interesting, although it's a marginal increase from what we had last month, but it's also a show of that things are not getting better. But, the, but Nasima is saying that we have well over 90%, judging by the drivers of inflation. Definitely. But these figures published mm -hmm. by the mm -hmm. NBS are not entirely mm -hmm. a reflection. For, for me, I will, I, will, I will rely on the, on the uh, uh, NBS report. Nasima should better bring out his own uh, inflation report. Uh, if they do, at yes. at, they should do. Although we can speculate on on basis of what is happening, but for now the official report we have is that it is thirty four point one nine percent, which means that there is a marginal increase on inflation, and which also should demonstrate that the, the economy has not been fair to Nigerians and the hardships to continue. As we put it in our in our first release uh, yesterday, we said a catastrophic eye price of goods and services. That's how we put it in our in our press release, political analytics. Now, what I'm trying to point out is, in as much as this inflation is going higher and higher, government policy to address it has not really been very, very effective. Government policy in the last two months has followed the threshold or the trend of short to medium term. There's no long term a policy at this point in time, even though they are putting some long term policy that will generate effective maybe in three years' time, in four years' time, in five years' time. The one they are doing is just a six month short term to medium term. And this six month to uh, to eight months is, uh, medium term if uh, policy is not even helping matters because just like the 20 truck of rice we discussed earlier. Now, who is the people who are going to get the rice? I made mention of people that with this rice will end up in the house. Who the government or the, go the government or the governor will see as the custodian of the people to distribute the, house, the rice? And it's not there to them. Now, on the aspect of what is driving inflation, there is no far fetch from what is driving inflation in Nigeria. High cost of transportation is there. Social mover is part of it. Then, the issue around international price transmission of goods and services, which are your by one of the foremost economists I respected in Nigeria, also point out that uh, because of foreign reserve, it's because as much as people are importing, CBN will be sorting more dollar to be able to give to them. So it's reducing our foreign reserve. Although in the last one month, CBN will be able to gather over 34.8 billion US dollars in our foreign reserve. So what they will be using that money for is another thing that we need to be very, very careful of so that we don't have a deflated foreign reserve that we had towards early last year into uh, end of you know, last year. But, but the drivers of inflation in Nigeria are clearly low. High cost of transportation, insecurity, as well as first source removal that we remove, which we now, we, we yesterday in our press release, we target at a two-wing issue, meaning that deficit in energy and high cost of energy. Deficit in energy means that there is no energy supply to cater for agricultural products and storage facilities, as well as input for the agriculture is one. Then, the other aspect has to do with it. the cost of energy in the area of what people are spending to store food, what people are spending in terms of power generation to be able to manufacture food, complement 
like name it uh, uh, spaghetti uh, noodles and other complementary food that we eat including milk processed milk that we drink so what they are spending is also being transferred to the cost unit of each of the goods so that's why it's very expensive then someone talk about uh, nbsa because of high cost of gary rice uh, maize corn millet and the rest of them so you can you, you can relate that to the issue of how farmers are transporting their goods from the farm station to the city centers to the urban centers and to the end use large market like the uh, Use market garake market another part of market in abuja and the rest of so the cost of transition is definitely one of the biggest drivers as we have discovered leading to inflation but i will not forget to say it. the policy policy of government in the area of fiscal policy is also adding injury to this particular inflation when you ask me where is that one coming from talking about the fiscal policy of the government how much of the fiscal policy of government have been able to address inflation because in the last eight years we have relied on monetary policy to address inflation for us in nigeria so the fiscal side of it we're not focusing on that that's why you see that cpn came out and said no the problem we are having inflation is not going to be solved entirely by monetary policy fiscal policy must play a role Trade Especially policy. by jerking up the NPR. Definitely most places. But you can see that last week CBN is saying that they are looking forward to reduce the NPR rate soon. So we are hoping that they will do a a a a a, a dove approach to uh, to the to the to the NPR in, in no time frame. Now, now let's look at um the place of um, rural infrastructure mm. investment as mm. it was proposed mm. by Nasima mm. and LCCR. Exactly. Now recently we had um, the unbundling mm. of um, the Ministry of Agriculture and Rural mm. Development. Exactly. And we now have the livestock out of that. Exactly. With this unbundling, most people are expecting mm. that the Ministry of Agriculture would now have uh, uh, more time, mm. you know, uh, to look into some nitty gritties. Mm. For you, what what a part of rural inve infrastructure investment do you think Nigeria should begin to look into mm. if we have to begin to talk about um, improvement from this place? Because when we look at some of the inflation drivers, mm -hmm. you know, for the food inf inflation, mm. these are staples, exactly. You know, exactly. that are that, that we grow around, mm -hmm. especially in the rural areas. Exactly. So. How can we begin to up this game? I think one of the key things that Nasima is trying to point out is that let's go back to the localization of industries. Let's take our industry out of the city centers, out of the urban centers, and take to them to where they can get the raw material they need to have. I heard the government is trying to put up a particular call. They call it National uh, Agricultural Mechanization. It's a new policy that the current government is trying to implement, trying to experiment, meaning that we let's mechanize our agricultural area but there is also something we need to know there is a difference between agriculture and food production agriculture is a larger body of a uh, of of, uh, of uh, part of food production but food production is very very close that's why you see that the same nbs brought out a report about household farmers which they indicated that about 40.2 million nigerians who are practicing uh, what they call a, a, a small scale farming subsistence exactly they don't call it subsistence again because the people get offended what they call tell them they are carrying out subsistence farming so mm -hmm. small scale farming that's what they call them so they're also in integrated into the business angle of agriculture or food production so we must be able to understand and that's the area that Nesima is also coming that how can we ensure that this food production can we now be digitalized in a way or technologized in a way that we cannot have a broader way means whereby as people are producing food processing sites are all available most of the food that we get, all these type of food that we get, they are not being processed in a way to make sure that they are healthy. Just recently, cholera broke out. People are focusing on water, as although water remains one of the biggest drivers or one of the biggest if, uh, impact where cholera comes. But some of those food processes that we also get, there was a time that Gary was causing a lot of challenges for people. A particular Gary that you take will be call it, causing runny stomach for you. So those food processing sites need to be taken back to the rural area. That's one of the things that Nasima is calling for. If I'm be able to, if I'm interpreting what they're asking for, the other aspect has to do with the physical policy. I made mention that government not showing much concern, even though the Minister of Power has been showing concern. Because one of the things that this is a development that Nasima is calling for need is electrification. How much electrification are we doing for our rural area? I know Nigeria. I mean, there's this agency called National Rural Electrification Agencies. We're doing a lot. But also for what they are doing. They are going for solar energy, electrification, which is not too sustainable, which is very costly for rural area to maintain. If you go back to the hybrid area where uh, uh, electrification uh, uh, measures, which will be more sustainable. Then the other aspect is road infrastructure. 
rail infrastructure to ease transportation. To ease transportation. Mm. Because one of the things that river farmers have complained, I've had the opportunity of participating in farming in the river area between 2016 to 2018. You get it. So I'll be able to understand some of the challenges of these river farmers is cost of transportation. Their roads are not multiple, they don't have transport system for themselves. They rely on public transport systems that come on the other public and private systems that come from the city center to come and pick some of their waste. Then they also timely wait for the market days to transport their waste to the big market in their big local government and wherever. So those challenges cause a lot of challenges for them. So they, they, they put a little marginal profit on their waste. But the real challenge that we have is that storage facilities for this staple food. How can government evacuate some of these things from the big ma market? Because government have left it for the middle class, I mean the middle men to be able to take over. And that's when one particular newspaper came out and said, government said they have food, staple grains in our storage. They didn't have much. Because the middlemen have taken over the market. And that's what is happening. So whatever what Nasima is calling for strictly is that our government can improve some of this access to agricultural food production. Our government can improve the infrastructure within that sector of the economy, particularly the economy that they are pointing to. And our government can also secure that economy from the hands of sabotaging elements in our society. Because there is something we are all missing. In as much as government is doing everything possible to ensure that food is cheap, there are people who want to ensure that food is never cheap. Now, it's indeed a true reflection of where we are in Nigeria in terms of the current economic hardships and how Nigerians are bracing up towards some policy directions of the government, which it has termed short-term measures to address food inflation. Now, whilst this is the coverage given to these issues on the Punch newspaper and the Nigerian News Direct, in going further to review more dailies this morning, our next newspaper, the Vanguard has more on the mixed reactions greeting the data is published by the National Bureau of Statistics, NBS, as it concerns headline inflation, especially from the perspective of manufacturers. Now, let's pick up the Vanguard together, where we find on the front page the lead story, controversy as manufacturers reject NBS inflation figure. More on the story is captured on page 20 of the Vanguard. Strap lines read, inflation is 34.19% in June, says NBS. No, it is over 90, says Nasima. Beats all analysts' forecasts. Highest in Edo, Kogi, Cross River. Lowest in Nasarawa, Bochi, Adamawa. Analysts blame policy failures, recommend solutions, much like Mr. Adefolari has done this morning. But the differential is what we need to happen mm -hmm. here. I, I think the key issue is this. I it's a challenge for those people going against the NBS report. Go and do your own. Although they may not have the capacity, the funding to do it, but you can segment it. For instance, you can look they can do it region by region. The OPS, Organized Private Sector, the Manufacturing Association of Nigeria, they, they have the board, they have the money. Like, especially the Manufacturing Association of Nigeria. They have been doing some segmental studies on the economy. They can pull resources together and carry out monthly or quarterly uh, inflation report for themselves because instead of challenging N nbs in nbs report there are over 700 items that nbs normally review there are over 10,500 uh, uh what they call uh, 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 investigators they normally sent out and the review formula is very simple so anybody can carry out that particular inflation calculation but the issue is that the funding aspect because mbs has the money they have the men as i said 10,500. i think they must have increased it by now the 10,500 was at the time of in 2020 to 2021 that was 10,000 investigators investigator were sent out field officers were sent out across the country across major market across the market to go and do this Carry price survey, survey so they can also do it my association can do it OPS organization, they can't do it. So instead of you disputing NBS, NBS but we know that the, the, there's room for you to dispute based on your own understanding oh, of the. Yes. Because one thing I failed to mention earlier was that we could remember that early June there was fuel scarcity in some major cities. It's also added up. Maybe as a result of that, particularly for a manufacturer who like majorly based in Lagos, you understand that because of that period shortage of fuel supply, the price of fuel has already gone up. At the depot, production now, cost would also go up. Exactly. 
At the product, I mean, at the depot price now, now seven hundred twenty naira. Some filling station are selling at eight twenty, seven eighteen, and the rest of them. Black market is thousand naira. And you also remember, just last week there was this energy uh, conference that was organized in Abuja, yeah. and they raised the issue around how is how costly it is to produce a crude of uh, uh, or crude of oil in Nigeria, over thirty five dollar to produce one barrel of crude in Nigeria. So all this could be put into into perspective for them to now. So can be as this your report. You know, we can't accept this 40, 44, I mean, 34.19 that you are putting out. I can also dispute it, but because it is the official document that we have right now. Any other person, go and conduct your own. And now, now let's, let's, let's go away from the OPS and manufacturing mm -hmm. sector and come to some of the states where the differentials are recorded. Because mm -hmm. whatever the inflation rate is mm -hmm. in terms of statistics, exactly, would only be translated to how much the purchasing power of residents in such states can take them through exactly the yeah. exactly now what we find out that in nasarawa mm. the inflation rate is not as harshly felt as those who stay in the major cities definitely uh, w what do you see are these key drivers of the differentials experienced in different states cost of transportation particularly for i'm i stay i reside in nasarawa but the part of nasarawa i stay is also very it's an expensive city in a sense that it's close to abuja so most of the food that has been produced from those small scale farmers within that area they find good buyer high price in Abuja, so they use their Abuja price to pay for, the prices as, in, the in, Nassau, in that particular market. I could mention the market, Masaka market, Maraba market, the food distributor within the Maraba and the rest of them. They use Abuja price, so food price in within Kara local government, which is the extreme end of Nasara to Abuja, food price is very high. Then, if you're not talking about Kefi, Nasara local government, Nasara have gone, Lafia, Kefi, food are quite cheap because they are farm dominating areas they are areas they produce all these grains all this maize all this powdered rice and the rest of them so food are quite cheap so you can say okay, in nasara apart from Kavu local government any other the rest of 12 local government food could be very cheap in nasara state now go to kogi state because kogi state is a transit state for major travelers living in abuja living part of the north so lokoja is the most expensive city Within I or local uh, in, uh, local government in Kogi State, but we go to other local government in Kogi State. You will find food very cheap. Go to Dekina, do go to Ofu, go to Olamabo, and the rest part of either in the east or the center. It could be very cheap. Although uh, people in uh, the local government in uh, Kogi State also complain that is people in the not the central part of Kogi State also con con uh, complain about high cost of price of food. Then you go to Lagos, you can't even. Talk Peg the price 